Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sunday video. Now this is a recorded stream. Well, it is 2023. Why are we still talking about natural immunity from COVID infection? Because it was ignored entirely during the first year of the vaccine rollout, which led to a vaccine mandate policy in most private and public organizations. Well, many people suffered unfair treatment and discrimination due to the mandates. And I also made a video in 2021 outlining arguments for why natural immunity did not count in the U.S. What was the logic? Now we have a new peer-reviewed evidence to confirm superior and long-lasting natural immunity. Well, let's take a look. All right, so this is the new study published in The Lancet. This is a new meta-analysis that was published on February 16th, just a few days ago. In The Lancet, a very reputable journal for medical or biomedical uh, publications. Now, let's first cut to the chase of the main message of this paper. This paper reported that prior COVID infection provided high protection against severe diseases, including Omicron BA1, at about 90%, all right, at 10 months post-infection. Protection against reinfection uh, was high at 78% at 10 months before Omicron variant, but with the Omicron variant, it was at about 44%. Now, this is a systematic review and meta-analysis of 65 studies from 19 different countries. Now, what is more important is that this review excluded hybrid immunity from infection and vaccination. All right. Do I need to say any more? Well, if you want to listen more, well, please stay and let's compare this finding to real-world vaccine effectiveness. All right, so let's take a look. Here we are looking at a surveillance report, COVID-19 vaccine surveillance report from the UK. All right, this is a UK Health Security Agency latest public data. Uh, this is from February 2nd. For those of you who have been following Dr. John Campbell, you should all be very familiar with this. Well, in my opinion, the UK agency has been doing a much better job than the US CDC in keeping track of real-world vaccine effectiveness and reporting them in a much, much more comprehensible way for the public. All right, so they're always giving in some form of table. Now, first, the UK is no longer tracking effectiveness against symptomatic disease. The latest data they have, okay, which is described in this first paragraph here, basically says is that the three doses of monovalent uh, or the original vaccine had about 50 all right, to 60% uh, effectiveness against infection shortly after vaccination. But by six months, that effectiveness went to near zero. Very alarming, right? Near zero. Now, we just saw that the matter analysis, analysis report that um, infection provided about 44% effectiveness against Omicron reinfection at 10 months. Zero against 44%, hmm, right? Which one's stronger? All right. Okay. So I know the goal of the vaccine is not to protect against symptomatic infection. It is to protect against severe disease. So let's move down uh, to the table and let's take a look. Now, one of the indicators for severe disease would be hospitalization. If it is not you know, uh, severe, people won't be hospitalized. In a, in a way of thinking. So this table one vaccine effectiveness against hospitalization in those aged 65 and over, even with two, possibly two booster, three plus doses, third plus doses, uh, we can see that the short-term effectiveness, okay, two weeks to two months, was at about 78.1% and dropped to about 51% by 
you know, between nine to eleven months. So what about the new bivalent booster? All right. So uh, in UK, okay, uh, British English, they call it Autumn 2022. Here in the US, we call it Fall 2022, the Fall vaccine campaign, the Autumn vaccine campaign of the bivalent booster. Well, let's take a look. By uh, basically by nine to ten weeks. All right, the vaccine effectiveness of the of the bivalent booster against hospitalization uh, for people that are 60 and older was between mid 40s to 50 percent. Both Pfizer and Moderna booster had about the same real world effectiveness. Now the Lancet uh, report study reported that even Omicron BA one infection provided 88.9. All right, so it, it's here, eighty-eight point nine percent against severe disease, against severe disease for ten months at forty weeks. Well, even though with a lower uptake of the new booster, we know that the uptake has not been great. Uh, we have not observed a very massive surge in COVID hospitalizations this winter compared to the last winter. It is possible, it is possible, it is not a direct evidence, but it is possible that the huge spike, or a huge Omicron outbreak from last winter, where so many people have gotten Omicron infection early on and have recovered, may have given them some immunity or natural immunity against severe disease until this winter. Now, this is all publicly available data. Uh, it is not a confirmed tide, but it is a hypothesis. It is very possible. Okay, so now I want to touch up on a uh, very touchy subject here. Here comes to the touchy subject, which is vaccine recommendations, right? Vaccine recommendations. Now, I'm looking at the COVID-19 CDC webpage and how they recommend a booster these days. CDC recommends one updated bivalent booster dose for everyone age five and older if that has been at least two months since your last dose, all right? So that means no matter you've gotten your uh, just your primary series, two doses, wait two months, at least two months, all right? Get your third dose, or if you have uh, gotten your third dose and wait at least two months to get the new bivalent booster. So that's the recommendation for five and older. So it is a very universal recommendation, pretty simple. But for six to four, uh, six months to four, it is a little bit more complicated, uh, which is not the discussion for, for this one, all right? Um, what about infection? If you have recently had COVID-19, all right, you still need to stay up to date with your vaccine. But you may consider delaying your next vaccine dose, whether it's a primary or booster, by three months from where your symptoms start and when you have no symptom. Okay, so that's what CDC currently recommend uh, about dosing and booster dosing. Now, this recommendations and uh, you know from the wording of it, you know, delaying by up to three months, by about three months or so. Uh, does seem to recognize a little bit of natural immunity, right? Uh, it is, but however, it is almost saying that people with hybrid immunity should get a booster after about five to six months of infections to stay up to date. To stay up to date, the definitions of up to date. But by now, I don't think it is an argument anymore that that we know hybrid immunity from vaccinations and infection provides the strongest immunity that is universally recognized. And when natural immunity alone can provide about 90% effectiveness against severe disease for 10 months, according to the latest meta-analysis, it is reasonable right, to expect that hybrid immunity, which is the strongest, may provide an even longer period of protection against severe disease. I just wonder how this new finding, okay, uh, from the Lancet paper, would affect the rumored or the expected yearly COVID-19 booster vaccine recommendations starting from 2024 and so on. Now, when these vaccines are primarily for protection against severe disease, that is the main goal, that is the main finding, the beneficial argument to ask healthy people who had recovered 
from a non-complicated case of COVID and have no lingering symptoms to get a yearly shot is a tough sell. Believe me. Now, if protection against severe disease is long-lasting, but against mild symptomatic disease is short-lived from this vaccine, what is the logic to keep boosting the young and healthy population with no post-infection complications? Now, I know there is always the argument saying that the vaccine can lower risk of long COVID and so on and so forth. But if a person recovered and have no long lingering symptom, no COVID. Two three months on, feel fine, get back to their life, and their natural immunity or natural plus vaccine immunity should last a fair amount of time. Does yearly boosting provide additional benefit? Right, that is that is a question. Now the second touchy subject is that vaccine mandate in the past two years have affected many people's lives, and I know that. You know, I know people who are affected. Many people with natural immunity who refused the vaccine lost their jobs initially, and some faced unfair treatment and discrimination. Now, I didn't make this up. Why is that? Because we had a documented literature. All right, this paper published in Nature in December. Right, properly described it. How people were facing discrimination because they were unvaccinated during the pandemic, and it is fair to say that a lot of these unvaccinated people may have recovered from an infection and possess natural immunity. However, many countries do not realize or do not acknowledge those natural immunity, especially during the early phases. Of the vaccine campaign, now. So, I know the officials always talked about vaccine benefits versus harms, and the harms mainly refers to the side effect of getting the vaccine. The immediate immediate side effect, like redness, fever, fatigue, soreness, you know, unable to work for a day or two, those are the immediate side effect. Some of the more rare harms, including myocarditis. In teenager to、uh, male under forty, or for adenovector adeno, adenovirus vector vaccine, the harm would be some thrombotic events or blood clotting events. Now, but almost no one, almost no one ever talks that talked about that the psychological and sociological harm or the negative consequences of refusing a vaccine. Now, when a vaccine can prevent long-term symptomatic infection and prevent transmission effectively, mandating has its value to benefit the greater public or has a high public health value. And for those vaccines, I strongly believe mandating is necessary. But when a vaccine is only good at preventing illness from a personal standpoint, preventing severe illness from a personal standpoint. Mandating policy could be medically unethical. Now, around last year, this time, let's look at this.、All、right. So here is a、um, piece of letter. A UK physician wrote this letter to Lancet,、uh, February seventh, twenty twenty-two, entitled "Healthcare Workers Recovered from Natural SARS-CoV-2 Infection Should Be Exempt." From mandatory vaccine ethics. Now, this doctor, Doctor McConnell, okay, pointed to multiple studies showing prior COVID provides equivalent or better protections from vaccination. Now, this this new matter analysis from Lancet has strengthened the argument. How many healthcare workers? Have lost their jobs because of these mandates, right? Will someone ever apologize? Now, if you or you know someone who has has been harmed or been negatively affected by these mandates, please leave me a comment. I am deeply sorry for everyone who has suffered physically, psychologically, and financially because of that mandates, and I know personally know people no no. People 
that lost their jobs because they refused the mandating vaccine policy. Now, they are wonderful people. Well, that is a very heavy subject, and、um, that is all for this week. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Meanwhile, please take good care, and don't give up. Bye.